We've gone and set up our site location plan. So if we go to our sheet, so what we've gone and done is we've set up our site location plan. Okay, so that's in a good area. Now I've drawn a rectangle. Now there's some additional information that I might have to go and fetch, but I'll show you that later on. And I'm going to now start deleting the information that is not required for my site plan. So you can see I've drawn a rectangle in my viewport, which has now translated that to my, my model space. What I'm going to do is I'm going to offset that by 10,000. Okay, so that 10,000 will give me a safe margin in which to work. What you can do now is you can go and trim away and get rid of the information that's not required so that when we are producing the rest of this information, it's, you're not going to pollute your drawing with unnecessary information. Okay, so we're going to be focusing on retranslating these buildings over here. I'll have to go and fetch some additional stuff for here, but I'll show you how that works. And then I'm going to start tracing some of these buildings best as I can. Okay, we're not too worried about the exact building layouts. So you can go and get an additional aerial photograph. Okay, and we'll trace this additional information. Okay, so that I'll go and fetch a bit later. But for now, I'm going to focus on, we need to reproduce the parking. Okay, and we need to start tracing some of the outlines of the buildings. Okay, so how do we go about doing that? Okay, and remember, later on, I will use this line to trim away the information I don't need. For now, I'm just focusing on drawing. For this exercise, if you double click in your on your paper space and you activate your viewport, you could also work here. It's totally up to here, but I'm going to work in my model space for this example. Okay, now this is quite interesting. You've got a UCS that always sits. So remember, we've put the UCS, we've shown the UCS on origin. Okay, if you move away from the origin, the UCS will start appearing here in the bottom left hand corner, just above the status bar. Now, if you click on the UCS, you can see you can move in a line, you can move origin only, you can translate this back to world. Okay, so what's actually going on here? If you remember the right hand rule, which is why X and Z is facing towards you, we can move this UCS. So if you click on the UCS and you right click on the UCS, here it will give you a whole series of different options you can do. We're going to start using this UCS so that we can draw accurately, so that we can reproduce those buildings quite um, quite quickly. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to focus on trying to trace the outlines of these buildings that I have here. You've got two options. You can use, um, so if we recall last time, you can actually hide. So I can actually select this image frame, right click, and I can go and say isolate. I can say isolate objects for now or hide objects. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this layout first because you can see it gives me a better outline and I'm going to go with what they've shown on this base map for now. Okay, we've got some outlines we can start tracing. I'm not going to worry about these too much. But I'm going to focus on retracing these buildings over here. Here I'll have, use my old photograph and I'm going to focus on just capturing a portion of this area over here. Okay, so how, we, how do we do this accurately? You'll notice that the site boundaries, the earth boundaries, which we've donated here in this blue dashed line, that's like a dashed dot line. You'll find that 90% of the times, 100% of the times, you're trying to work with your site boundary. So here you see, you can clearly see that this line of the building is parallel to the site boundary. Okay, so that's, that's quite common. But how do we work at that angle? So what you need to do is you're going to go and right click on your UCS. And you're going to go and use some of these tools now to move your UCS. Just remember... Your UCS is always shown in its origin. It's just good to know where your world coordinate system is. So it's a universal coordinate system. So this is the absolute origin of this AutoCAD file, and it will always be the origin. And you'll see if we move this UCS, how it will change. So what I want to do is I want to grab the UCS. So click on it. You're going to right click, and you're going to you're going to go and say you can move this three points. Okay, but in essence, what you want to do is you just hover over the UCS. <clears throat> There's this move in a line icon. So you're going to click move in a line. Now your UCS will move. It's like in, when you use SketchUp and you want to move your um, coordinate system around, it's the same principle. So I'm going to put my UCS over here for now. Then <clears throat> it gives you these grips now that you can align 
And that's all I need to do. So I've moved my UCS to this new origin. So if, if I hover over here, in essence, this will become, remember this is your coordinate system is referring to the world coordinate system. Okay, so just ignore that for the time being. But you can see now that I've managed to align my UCS with this site boundary. And guess what? Look at your cursor. Your cursor has changed. Now, if I want to go and trace these buildings, I can now quickly trace these buildings accurately. So I'm going to go and make a new layer. Just remember, if you don't have these layers ready, just make them again. So I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to call this existing buildings. Okay. And I'm going to make this a white layer because it's just going to be easier to work with. It'll be easy to see everything. Um, that's fine. Select the colors white. Here, just remember, change your line weights. These need to be quite thick. Okay, so these can be 0 0.5, 0 0.0. We're going to have a proposed building line. So these we can make 0.4 for now or 0.5. We can come back and change that to suit our needs. But for now, existing buildings, I'm going to leave that as my layer. Okay, and make that my active layer. All right. Just remember, while you're working, you can also just go to the top here and you can use different, um, you can literally select different layers and that will become the default layer. But just try and work on layers. It's important. Remember, you can always change a layer once you're done as well. Okay, now that I've got this as my active layer, make sure that on your home ribbon that the property section, all of this is set by layer. Okay, now I can start using the rectangle tool. So here, as accurately as you can, you can click and you can start tracing the outlines of these buildings as accurately as you can. Spacebar, repeat command. Just remember a rectangle technically is a polyline, so it's a closed set of lines. Okay, so they have captured my first outline of my building. Now you'll notice that this building is, sits tight on the boundary here. And for safety's sake, you can move the UCS again. You can move this UCS again to this location if you want to maintain good accuracy. Okay, now I'm going to use the polyline tool. It's a polyline tool here as close as you can. I'm using the nearest function snap here. Now you can see you can use the F8 command, which is this icon over here to lock it so that you're working on these strict X and Y coordinates. Or what you can do is you make sure that the tracking is enabled, which will then produce a green line. If you see, it will produce a green line. And it'll also, it'll, also, it'll also track at angles for you as well. So if you hold down this down arrow right next to the tracking settings, you can set different angles. Okay, but that's fine. So you've got those two options to work with. So I'm going to start polyline again. PL, so polyline command, anywhere here, nearest. Now you'll see that there'll be a green line shooting out, telling you that you're working square. So here, carry on. <clears throat> so trace. Try and trace these as best you can, as accurately as you can. Okay, we're not looking for 100% traced buildings. We're just trying to give the council an idea of, and their database is showing what we're seeing here. So as long as we try and represent as close as we can, happy days. Here I can just use, if you follow the green line, you'll see that it'll intersect here. So where that intersects, but here's a good, um, Point to note, if you've got nearest active the whole time, you're going to end up with this scenario. So what you need to do is you shift right click on your keyboard and here I can say perpendicular. So then I know it's going to snap perpendicular and you can see it's done a good job. Now with a polyline, if you want to close a polyline, you don't have to go and click back at the end here. The last segment, you can literally go and say click on close and you'll see it'll close the polyline. Okay, so go and reproduce these outlines of the building best you can.
Okay, so what I've gone and done is I've gone and traced most of the buildings I can. I could have actually left that building off for the time being, but I've just included that. Now that I've done that process, the next thing I need to do is I need to hide. So in this right click and end the isolation. So end the object isolation. Now that we've got our aerial photograph back, now I need to go and add. So here we've got some structures that we need to go and add. So again, I can use my rectangle tool, but remember, you need to move your UCS back into the location. Remember, if you go past the view where the UCS is, it will start appearing here. Okay, so go and grab your UCS again. So click on your UCS, grab it from its origin, click on that selection node, put it back in its location, and then I'm going to use this align tool again just to make sure that I'm working accurately. Here I'm going to use the rectangle tool. So you can see this is right on the edge of the site as best as you can. I've got a feeling that's away from the building line somewhat. Do that. Spacebar again. Start over here. For now, it's just we're just trying to do our best. And I've got a feeling that there's a big tree here, so I've got a feeling that it'll line up with that. So use that, use that tracking tool so that I can work accurately. So here you can see I've got a building outline here. This will typically start off the boundary. So a potty line again. And you can see, you can see parts of the facade. So I'm just going to use this point over here. Come back to here. Go back to here. Best as you can. Here there's a funny feature in the front. So here you might just have to... So here's a bit of a curve maybe. So here you will need to make a decision. You can switch F8 off if you had that enabled. So here I'm just going to create some straight line work. And I can see this comes back to a point over here. Something like that. Now I can click F8 again, switch on F8, so here I can do this again. And here I've got a funny detail that comes out, a fraction, so maybe switch F8 off again. It'll come back to here. F8 again, switch F8 on, snap it, because this might line up with that, which it does. And then you're just going to simply start completing this. Now that you've got an endpoint here, you can hover on that endpoint and then start, and it'll snap to that point, and then see for close. Okay. Right, so that's, I've got that building in place. This one looks pretty straightforward and simple. So yeah, again, body line again. So I'm over here, come back to here, come back. Here I'm just taking a guess because this building is quite, it's a couple stories. So here you might have to add a couple more. But as we said, this is not going to be that accurate. So, but we know that. We understand that that's not going to be very accurate and then see for close. Okay, so you can see I've managed to capture the outlines of these buildings pretty rapidly. Okay, so polyline. This one is tricky because there's a tree here in the middle, so I've got a feeling, my guess is, you might have to go to site and check this information. Here's like some sort of patio, so maybe I'm just going to add this distance as well. Come back over here. This might be some sort of garage. Okay, and I'll come back and you can see there's a tree in the front, so I'm assuming that will do something like that. Remember, right click, perpendicular, and C for close. C for close on your keyboard. Okay, now there's another, there's another little building over here. There might be some stuff over here, but I don't know that at the moment. So I'm just going to try and take an educated guess and show the roof doing something like that. Okay, but it's enough context. This is an existing building on our site, and we're going to have to show this at the Monash. But for now, I'm going to leave it like this, and we're going to highlight our site and read a bit later on, and we need to fix the roads and add the parking. Okay, so I'm going to go and add the rest of the building information. Okay, so at this point, we have now captured all the surrounding buildings. The next thing that we need to tackle is just picking up the parkings. So here we can see we can focus on a bit of parking down here, maybe. I'm not going to worry about the street too much. I might add just a street line going further down, just as accurately as I can. But we're going to focus on putting the parking in here and showing this contextual parking. We don't have to show the sports grounds. We can leave it just like this. And we can just put a note saying sports ground. The last thing that we might have to do is go and add some additional information with regards to the earth boundaries. But we've got a tag that we can use here, and I'll show you how to use that a bit later and how we can go and show each earth boundary. Here this site, there was some information missing, but I might go and find some additional information here quickly and add that in.